Choosing the right study techniques is an area of learning often overlooked. People often emphasize studying for longer, but not necessarily using the best techniques. You know, Catherine, if you were going to the gym, if you were trying to get swell, mm -hmm. trying to get fit, would you use the techniques that don't get you jacked as fast or the ones that potentially put you at risk of getting injured? Absolutely not. So why would you do the same thing when it comes to studying? I'm Aiden, And I'm Catherine, and today we're going to be covering evidence-based study tips. In 2017, researchers from Kent State University, Duke University and the University of Virginia got together and tried to figure out which study techniques were best according to psychological research. The worst performing techniques were things like rereading your notes, highlighting your notes and even rewriting your notes. And I don't know about you, but I've done that like so many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, me too. But this actually comes under the concept called illusion of learning, where your brain can learn to recognize a subject but not really entirely understand it. The top two techniques they found were space testing and practice testing. In today's video, we'll be going through what those are and how best to implement them in your own study. Also, check out our bonus video where we will take these techniques and use them to study a real concept. Let's get into it. Practice testing involves testing yourself on concepts without any notes or any other material to look at. Why does it work so well? Essentially, if the more you recall the same information without any other uh, external stimuli, the more your brain will remember the path and the neurons become basically more connected. And so if you practice testing yourself, you'll find tests a breeze. Makes sense. <laughs> Flashcards are an amazing example of practice testing. So there's a few things you need to do before you start making flashcards. The first thing is trying to organize all the information that you have on the subject. Maybe you have some kind of database or set of notes that you could use, and Notion is really good for this. We'll cover that in a future video. Love Notion. But the second thing that you need to do is make sure you really understand the content. If you're trying to memorize something, it's pretty much useless if you don't actually understand it. As long as you get understanding at least sort of at one point in your learning, uh, if you can memorize the concept, that understanding is going to kind of come back to you when you're in the test and you're going to be fine. But if you never have that understanding in the first place, it's kind of like you're doing useless work. Once you understand the content, then you can actually make the flashcards. After you do this, you can activate your prior knowledge by looking through and reviewing previous concepts. This will help prime your brain for what's going to come in. Now when you're doing those flashcards, try to go through them once, and then what you want to do is kind of rate how well you did with recalling the information that was on the other side of the flashcard. You can divide this into three different piles. I like to think of it as like red, yellow, green. Red is stuff you don't recognize and can't explain. Yellow is something you do recognize but you can't explain well. And green is something you recognize and can explain and understand. But Aiden, how do you actually know which box to put it in? Well, there's a lot of things you can do. The first thing is elaboration, right? You might want to try and explain a certain concept back to yourself to really reassure you that you understand and remember it. You could use the Feynman technique, which is trying to explain something such that a five-year-old could understand it, right? At that point, you truly, truly understand something. You could also add maybe some really concrete examples to help with your understanding of, of a given concept. Or you could potentially try and reflect on why uh, you got something slightly wrong, right? Why you missed a little detail, or um, or how could you, you know, avoid that for next time? What little details did you kind of miss that were critical to recalling the flashcard correctly? Ideally, you don't want to be putting it in the green box unless you truly understand the concept. Once you've completed a set of flashcards, you can do a free recall activity. Free recall is when you recall information from your brain, except this is without any stimuli, so without any of your flashcards. After you go through an entire set, take a sheet of paper and write down everything you remember. Then you can look back on it and see what you've missed and see which areas you're not as strong at. Flashcards are a fantastic tool to use. Sometimes they can be a little complicated if you have them in person on paper. So having some software to do it is, is really good. Um, and we like to use Anki, but another good software is, is Zorbi, and they do similar things. Anki's a bit more technically difficult. Yeah. yeah, with Anki, you also have to pay for it on the App Store, but it's free to download on your laptop. So just keep that in mind. 
So we've talked about practice testing, but we haven't talked about the classic example of practice testing and recalling information. Practice exams. This may seem a little self-explanatory, but it's actually incredibly beneficial for all of your study. If you wanted to run a marathon, you wouldn't practice by walking every day, you would practice by running. When we practice exams, we practice the exact thing we're going to be doing in our end of year exams. As long as you make sure you don't have any notes with you and you have as close to exam conditions as possible, it's very similar to the flashcards where it's active recall. You have a question and you need to recall the information that you've learned and consolidate it into an effective question, or effective answer to that question. And also it's really critical that you mark your practice exams because otherwise you're not going to know and be able to reflect on what you got wrong, mm. right? So. You can find the exam schedules on the NZQA website and it's exactly what the markers will have in front of them. So you can actually compare your answers and check to see whether you've received all of the points you can. We yeah. really like practice exams. Do practice exams. So overall, implement practice testing by doing practice exams and using flashcards. Spacing your learning out over time is super important and a great visual demonstration of this is the Ebbinghaus curve or the forgetting curve, less fancily, and it suggests that if you uh, learn something, it's, you're going to start going down from 100%. But if you if you were to practice, it goes right back up, right? And it goes right to 100% again. And eventually it stops going down as fast in terms of how much you're forgetting. Giving your mind space between learning a piece of information is really important. When your brain learns something, it immediately goes into the short-term memory. And our goal for studying in general is to get this information into the long-term memory. Consolidation is the process where something, a piece of information, goes from your short-term memory into its long-term memory. This spacing between learning really helps with consolidation. Space repetition works by you slowly increasing the time between revisions of material. Say you have a given answer to a question, maybe it's decently long, you learn the answer to that question, you repeat that learning, you kind of go over it a day from then, and then you go over it a week from then, and then a month, and then a year, right? And so at, at that sort of um, point, at that sort of length of time, you've got it in your long-term memory permanently. Mm -hmm. And there are apps that can help with this, right? Anki, which we mentioned before, and I think Zorbi, helps with uh, space repetition because it gives you the flashcards that you need to learn in that moment, right? It will continue to increase the amount of space between you seeing a certain flashcard, and that's yeah. super useful. A related but important thing to incorporate is scaffolding. Essentially, scaffolding is just starting with the basic concepts and working your way up to the more complex ones, but that's how learning is typically structured in anyways. So overall, space repetition is a really crucial tool in helping you learn and study effectively. Flashcards do have their limitations though. They can promote some surface level learning and they can kind of promote you just rote learning concepts rather than actually understanding them. So once again, it's really crucial that you understand things first and then try to remember that, uh, re remember the concepts. Um, Whenever you use flashcards, always remember to ask yourself why and how. Think about the deeper questions and the deeper understanding that can come from the flashcard prompt. Flashcards also don't necessarily help you with applying your knowledge. This is where practice exams come in, just like we talked about earlier. We'll be covering how to do this exactly in a much more detailed video. Active learning. Spaced recall. Do it. I've been Catherine. And I've been Aiden. And that's been how to use evidence-based study tips in your study. See you later.